I got to say, I'm going to take a look at Raspberry Pi alternatives. Now, I have two boards that I want to use as points of reference, but I'm going to be doing this from a more general perspective. So I'm going to be talking about the things that you'll want to look for when you think about buying a Raspberry Pi alternative. So my interest in Raspberry Pi alternatives predates the pandemic by a couple of years, but my real interest in these more recent developments had to do with a lot of the issues that the pandemic brought on concerning supply and demand around Raspberry Pis. Supply chain issues created a shortage of components needed to make Raspberry Pis, so this created a shortage of these boards that were available, so the price for them went sky high because demand was still pretty high. So one of the natural outcomes of that is alternatives will sometimes become available and people will start looking looking at that because I don't want to spend $120 for a used Raspberry Pi, kind of like me. So the prices of Raspberry Pis have certainly come back down. You can get a new one for a reasonable price now. There's still a little bit more than some of the alternatives, but even so, the alternative market is now well established because of that, and you might want to still think about getting one of these alternatives. So I want to highlight the things to look for whenever you're thinking about buying a Raspberry Pi alternative, and then I'm going to look at the two examples that I have with. So here's a list of things to look for. The first thing to look for is obviously the processor. Now, most of these are going to have very similar processors. They're probably going to be some kind of ARM-based processor, 64-bit, and they're probably going to be between one and a half to two gigahertz. That's the typical range of a single board computer. Now, they might have some slower end boards that have slower processors or some higher end boards that have uh, faster processors, but just look at the number of cores they have and then also the, the CPU speed. And that'll kind of give you an idea of how it would stack up to a Raspberry Pi or another uh, single board computer. Now, there are other things about processors that you might want to consider, and that is the implementation of the ARM architecture that it has. And if it is a x86 processor, look at the generation that it might have, because that'll give you an idea of its performance characteristics as well. The next thing to look for is obviously going to be the GPU. Now, this might not be as important if you're not going to be using your single board computer uh, for graphic intense applications. So if you're not going to be running any kind of emulation software or you're not going to be using it for a desktop environment, the GPU might be less important. But if you're going to be using it for different kinds of applications like retro gaming, or you might be using it for a media center or something like that, the GPU then will be very important. So you want to make sure that it's got at least a decent GPU. And these are going to be bundled with the processor. So it's not like you can swap it in and out, but you will be able to find reviews of these online typically and just get an idea of what the GPU performance characteristics are going to be like. So you can get an idea of how well it's going to work with your particular application. The next thing to look for is RAM. The RAM is going to be a skew typically on most boards. They'll typically come in one, two, four, and eight uh, gigabyte configurations on most boards if they have a different SKU for each one. Now, Raspberry Pi has some lower end boards that have a gig of RAM, which would be fine for some basic applications, but they also have some higher end boards that have up to eight gigs of RAM. Now, the eight gig boards would be more useful for things like a desktop computer where you're going to be running multiple applications. So between that, you have the two and four gig boards. Mine's a four gig board, which works great for what I'm using it for. And so that would be the one I would choose. And you're going to save a little bit of money by going with the four gig SKU over or the 8 gig SKU. In any case, just consider what you're going to be using it for and buy the appropriate board that's going to have the RAM for your needs. So the next thing to look at is the connectivity that the board offers. Now, this is a broad category that has a lot of things to consider. So this is going to look at things like Wi-Fi and LAN connections. Most all boards have some way of connecting to a network. More small boards will have just Wi-Fi. Um, higher end boards will support both. And some of the mid-range ones will have an Ethernet port on them. And you'll also want to look at things like USB versions and GPIO specialized ports for storage like EMMC, camera ports and display ports. Some of these boards offer all of that. Some have a subset of that. Just depends on what the board is designed to do and what you're looking for in the board. So beyond the basic hardware, the next thing to look for is operating system and software compatibility. Operating system compatibility is a big deal because you want to make sure not only is your board supported in the current ecosystem, but also in the future as well. So around this, I typically like to look for single board computers that support Armbian, which is really a framework that's used to build Debian based distros. So you can build just a pure Debian distro, or you could go with something like Ubuntu. And in either case, you're going to have a rich ecosystem of software that you can use to configure your board for your particular application. 
Now, there are more niche operating systems that you can get for some of these single board computers as well. Some of them are built for retro gaming, like RetroPie, or some of them are built for media center uh, devices. If you wanted to use this to watch movies and other content online, you can get those kind of distros. You might even be able to find a BSD and Windows that has been built for some of these single board computers as well. It just depends. But in most cases, you're almost always going to have some version of Linux and most likely going to be some version of Debian that will work with your single board computer. So something that relates directly to software compatibility is community and support. There's kind of two categories of this. One is the ecosystem and the other one is the long-term support, which I've already mentioned. Community and support is very important to the success of a single board computer. You want to make sure that the board that you're getting has an ecosystem around it so that you'll be able to find different things and different support and different apps and help if you need it. And the community is really where most of that's gonna come from. And also the long-term viability of a board is also gonna be community driven as well. Because if a board doesn't catch on, you're not gonna be getting builds or updated software for that board. It's going to kind of fall into obsolescence because nobody really cares about it. And that's going to be the case for more niche products. However, you can find a board that's got RMBM behind it, usually you're gonna have a fairly long tail for that particular board and you're gonna be able to get software updates for it fairly far into the future. If you get a Raspberry Pi, of course, it's gonna be supported for a long time out of the box, but some of the other boards may not have that ability. So if you're looking for just kind of a catalog for support, go to the RMBN website, which I'll look at in just a second, and you can see a lot of boards that are available on the RMBN site that will probably have a long tail to them, and you'll know you'll be able to get security updates and software updates far into the future. If you're not sure where to start, Go to armbian.com and just look at this page. It'll give you basically a catalog of boards to look for and different filters that you can apply to that. So if you go over to downloads, you can see that you have four different architectures that are supported by Armbian. Now the top one, ARCH64 is ARM64. Uh, it's a great option if you're not sure what to use. This is probably gonna be the lion's share of the boards that are supported by Armbian. RISC-V or RISC-V is an up and coming architecture. It's an alternative to ARM, it's royalty free. So a lot of board makers are implementing it as an alternative to ARM. Of course, AMD 64 is x86, 64 bit. It's on here because you can build ARM in uh, for AMD 64 bit computers. And then ARM HF is a 32 bit implementation of the ARM architecture. I'm gonna click on ARM 64 right here, and this is going to go to the download page for this. You can see that there's platinum support for a number of different boards. Banana Pie is a pretty good board company. Uh, I've had decent success with them in the past. I've had sketchy success with Orange Pie, but that's a personal thing. If you scroll down here, you can see that you have some filters that you can apply. And uh, you uh, started with 64, or sorry, rather for ARM64, you have 44 that are supported and some community support up to 36. And then the, the purpose right here would have general purpose, IoT, NAS networking, and desktop. And you have different manufacturers right here that you can choose from. And you can scroll through this, you'll see some uh, brand names that you'll probably recognize. Um, so the ones that I like are anything from Libre Computers and anything from Radza, uh, that's R-A-D-X-A. And La Frida and La Potato are from Libre Computers. And these are uh, more of their entry level boards, but they're still great boards for doing some more basic stuff. Um, coming down here, uh, you'll see stuff from uh, you'll see Radza Zero right here. That's kind of a Raspberry Pi Zero alternative. So it's a really basic board, but it's a great board for uh, doing some basic IoT type stuff, but it's from Radza. And Radza also makes the Rock series, who, so the Rock 3A, the Rock 5, Rock 64, Rock uh, Pi 4, and Rock Pi E. And this one right here in the Rock Pro 64, these are all from Radza as well. And then you have the Renegade, which is from Libre Computer. That's a great board if you're looking just for a good alternative uh, to something like a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, that's a good board and it's very affordable as well. So this will give you a lot of options to choose from. Just pick one that is going to kind of be in the range that you're looking for. You have to click down into each one of these boards, like the Rock Pi 4. This actually has a couple different SKUs associated with it, and it'll give you uh, some of the uh, available uh, operating systems for it. So it has Armbian 23.5, uh, Jammy, which is the latest version of Debian. And you have different kinds of support for it. So it's got a form that you can use if you have any questions. And then the hardware details right here will take you over to Rats' site and you can get the, the spec sheet on it. And it'll tell you basically uh, the 
kinds of spec that you can have from it, the, the CPU, the, the GPU, all that kind of stuff, and the different kinds of things that you can use with this kind of board in any case. But if you're in doubt, Raspberry Pi is always popular, but just scroll through this, get a feel for what is out there, and then kind of use this as a way to narrow down your search uh, for a good alternative to a Raspberry Pi. Now, I want to compare two boards that I have to a Raspberry Pi, and I have a Raspberry Pi 4 right here, and it's got my camera module strapped to the back of it. In any case, this is gonna be the benchmark that I wanna compare the other boards to. The one that I want to compare most directly to it is this one right here, and this is a Rock Pi 4C+. It's very similar to a Raspberry Pi 4 in terms of specs and performance. And and the one that's not quite on par with these two, but it's more probably similar to a Raspberry Pi 3 would be uh, the Libre Computer Renegade. And it's a fairly decent board too, but it's very affordable and a very decent board, in my opinion, for doing a lot of things that don't require as much horsepower as a Raspberry Pi 4. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of these three boards. They have different uh, CPUs as you would expect. So the Raspberry Pi 4 has a quad core at 1.8 gigahertz. So that's a decent performing chip. The Rock Pi 4C Plus has a six core uh, with at 1.5 gigahertz. So this has got a little bit more clock speed, but this has got a, a two more cores. So that's going to shape your performance depending on what you're trying to do. And the Renegade is a, is a cheaper option. It's got a four core at 1.4 gigahertz. So decent performing there for most applications if you don't need something that's particularly high end. For RAM, they each have different RAM configurations in terms of which you get. So the Raspberry Pi 4 has one, two, four, and eight. I have the four gig version. Now for the Rock Pi 4C Plus, I think you can get a four and eight gig version of that. And then the Renegade, I think comes in two and four gigabyte configurations. And I have the four in each one of these. In terms of their GPU, they just have the GPU that's built into the SOC that was uh, put it onto the particular board. So the Broadcom video core is basically the one that comes with the Broadcom SOCs and Raspberry Pi has been using Broadcom since their first board. And so video core has been a part of that ecosystem and it's a fairly decent GPU. Now, Rock Pi, Rock Pi is using Rockchip and so is the Libre computers and Rockchip SOCs are typically found in smartphones. And so they're going to have smartphone GPUs in them. So these are low power consuming uh, GPUs, but they're designed for media playback. So these are actually exceptional GPUs for doing things like streaming and playing video content. So you could definitely use these for something like a home theater PC if you wanted to use it for that kind of application. But they'll also work for retro gaming platforms, or you can even install uh, a version of Android on the Rock Pi 4 or the Renegade and use it for an Android TV type device if you wanted to do that. Still, each one of these has a different GPU and it's going to impact the performance depending on which one you have. Now, in terms of connectivity, it just depends on the board. Again, the Raspberry Pi 4 is fully loaded in terms of what it supports for its connectivity. It's going to have LAN, it's going to have Wi-Fi, it's got dual micro HDMI, it's got, of course, the 40 pin GPIO, USB 2 and 3, it's got a proprietary camera and display on it, and all of these things are going to be great for connecting up whatever hardware you want to use and whatever peripherals you want to use with the single board computer. Now, the Rock Pi 4C has basically all of that stuff. It doesn't have the display, but it does have a camera port on it. The one advantage it has is eMMC, which is a faster class of storage than what you would get on a Raspberry Pi 4, which only supports SD cards. Rock Pi 4, of course, supports SD cards, but eMMC is a faster standard, so it allows you to have embedded multimedia capacity or chips on it, which is a much faster standard than uh, just an SD card. And the same is true for the Libre Renegade. It has eMMC built in on it. So it has the ability to attach a much faster storage device to it. So that's great for uh, different kinds of media playback if you want to use it for that purpose. Now, of course, the last thing that we have to look at is operating system compatibility. Raspberry Pi 4 just blows away these other two boards in terms of what it supports for operating systems. And that's simply because it's a more popular board. Typically, more popular boards are gonna have a lot more available options to them. So Raspberry Pi 4 supports, of course, Raspbian, which is the Raspberry Pi OS, Android, Debian, Manjaro, RetroPie, Ubuntu, RISC OS, Arch, Gentoo, Armbian. Uh, it has Libre ELSC, which is like Kodi operating system and even FreeBSD. So there's a lot of options there. Ras uh, Rock Pi 4 C Plus 
it's part of the Armbian ecosystem, so you can get uh, Armbian for it. So that's going to include Debian and Ubuntu, but you can get Manjaro for it, and you can get Libre Elac as well as FreeBSD, which I was quite surprised that it actually supported that. But still, it's a decent array of supported operating systems. For most people, the Linux-based ones are going to be what they're going to be using anyway on this. So that's going to make the RockPi 4 supported now and probably well into the future because it has the backing of Armbian. The Libre Renegade is kind of like it as well. It supports Ubuntu, Raspbian, Debian, uh, Armbian. It has a version of, of Android as well as the Rock Pi 4. Uh, you can get LACA, which is a, a distro for uh, retro gaming. And then, of course, Libre Elect, which is Kodi. And so you can use all three of these for video playback uh, if you want to do that. Or you can use them as just standard uh, desktop computers, uh, plug in a monitor, keyboard, and mouse to it. And you can use it to do things like surf the internet or do some basic productivity with these boards as well. So all of them have wide operating system support. Now, in terms of community support, which I don't have on this, uh, definitely the one that's going to have the most community support is the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is generally speaking, the one that's going to have the broadest community support because it kind of created the single board uh, computer ecosystem for the consumer. Now, single board computers have been around for much longer than the Raspberry Pi, but the Raspberry Pi kind of invented that niche and uh, the Rock Pi 4C and the Libre Renegade and others like it, it basically copied what the Raspberry Pi 4 did and have been riding its coattails. But Raspberry Pi is still the leader in the space, but still, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't consider one of these other alternatives because where there is competition, generally you're going to have a lot more options and you're going to have a lot more of buy-in from different vendors and you get a larger ecosystem that's going to drive down prices and make more available options for the consumer, which is you. So if I had to choose between the Rock Pi 4 C Plus and the Razda or however you say that uh, ecosystem and the Libre computer ecosystem, I would probably throw a coin up and just flip it and say, well, I don't know, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I've had pretty good success with both of these boards, and that's why I would consider uh, using anything from Libre Computers or Radza in the future as well, because I think they offer decent support from the community as well as the board manufacturers themselves. But that being said, they are cheaper options, but they just don't have the level of support a Raspberry Pi 4 does or the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. Having said that, what I have found that if I can generally get something to work on a Raspberry Pi 4, making it work on a Raspberry Pi 4 alternative is not that hard. So I've gotten things to work on a Raspberry Pi 4 and then turned around and did the exact same steps on a Rock Pi 4 and a Libre Renegade without having to change anything. And it just worked. So if the Raspberry Pi 4 is the standard, these other ones are probably going to follow that standard fairly closely. So something to consider there. So as of the recording of this video, these are the current prices of these boards. A Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model is 75 bucks. And that's a far cry from what it was just even a few months ago where a used board was going north of 100 bucks. So the Rock Pi 4C Plus is $67 uh, on Okido's site. Uh, uh, for some reason on Amazon, these things have gone up really high and I'm not sure why, but still you can get them for about $67. And the Libre Renegade, you can get for about 50 bucks on Amazon. These prices typically fluctuate too. You can get these as low as $35, but I've typically seen them around the $45 to $50 range. And they always fluctuate, all of these boards do. So if I was buying a board right now and I had to choose one of these, I would probably still go with the Raspi 4 simply because of the community support and the longevity of the board. I really like the Raspberry Pis, but if this was to go up to like 90 bucks a board or 95 bucks a board, I would still look at the Rock Pi 4C Plus or a Renegade as an alternative to that because I really don't want to pay that much uh, for a board if I can get something that's similar spec for much less. And I'm still going to get decent support for both of these because they have RBM behind them and I can get software that'll work for them as well as a small but vibrant community for each one of these platforms. So still a viable option if you don't want to deal with a Raspberry Pi. But as of right now, I would go with the Raspberry Pi 4, but 
things can change and I might be considering these alternatives in the future. I hope you found this to be useful information. There's a lot of things to look at when you're thinking about buying a single board computer. Of course, you can just default to the Raspberry Pi, but the alternatives are out there and sometimes they're very competitive to the Raspberry Pi at a much lower price point. So it's something that you might want to consider. So if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe to the channel. If there's a board that you really like, tell me about it in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.